Hey, Daisy. You got a haircut. Let's see. You want to go for a walk? You want to go for a walk? You want to go for a walk? Do you? Daisy, you want to go for a walk with your new haircut? Yeah? Go see your boyfriend? Yeah? Go see Gizmo? <laughs> See if he's out there. There's Gizmo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there he is. There he is. He stops and looks every day. Don't worry. He'll be back. Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's Dominic, the Primetime Treasure Hunter here. As you can see, it is a beautiful fall morning. It's Saturday, about 8.15. We're heading over to an estate sale. It looks like there's lots of vintage stuff there. So let's head out, see what we could find. I'm number 22 on the list. I already signed up yesterday. here we go the estate sale house is to the right i'll show it to you in a few moments all right so this is the house we are going to head over to in just a moment gonna head inside all right so i head down the basement stairs as usual i turn the corner look up and i see this vast space around me with all these potential treasures yet there's nobody there how could that be I'll explain in just a moment. I grab that Thor trade paperback comic. I'll just add it to my comic inventory. Then I grab this vintage X-Wing fighter. I thought I would get it, but later decided against it. I'll tell you why. Uh, then I grab this uh, Dark is Rising book, and uh, it's the Sequence series. That one goes for $60, so that was a nice pickup, worthy of the double tap, as is this one, The Secret of Monkey Island. Wait until you hear the story about this and how I was able to find this treasure. So first, let me just set the context of coming down those basement stairs. Uh, basically, what I knew ahead of time was that at this sale, there were going to be vintage video game consoles for sale in the box. So we're talking an original Nintendo, a Super Nintendo, a PlayStation, and then more modern system, a Wii U. Now, based on my experience with these particular estate sale dealers, as much as I love them and as much as I go to so many of their sales, I do happen to know that whenever they do get in a vintage video game console in the box, it's priced way too high for me to make any money off of it. In fact, I'd actually lose money if I purchased it. So I just stay away from it. But I also know that not everybody else knows that. And I also know that whenever there is an ad that's published somewhere in like local classifieds or online or through email distribution list, and it shows that these vintage consoles are gonna be there, that's gonna draw a lot of people to the sale to try to get them, both young and old. So, you know, here's one of the keys. I know there's gonna be a mad rush towards items that I know are not good to purchase for resell. So, what do I do in that situation? I let everybody else go run over to that area where all the video games are, and then I just go and I focus on other areas where I know there's value and I'll have nobody else around me in terms of competition. And that's exactly how it played out. And sometimes you will have the irony of this situation occur in which you find a video game. Now, this is an old video game because it's in the box, okay? This is a PC version of The Secret of Monkey Island. And this is one of the most sought after video games out there, but it wasn't in the video game section because they didn't realize that it was a video game. They just, you know, it looks like a book if you look at it, right? So this is only two bucks. 
Okay, now this is the vintage version of it. Okay, this is they they did re-release it later on, but um, you know they had to have a Windows 10 version of it. But this one here, this is the original one from 1990. I'll bring it as close as possible so you could see it. Now it has all of the uh, discs, and I'll let me let me bring that out here so you could see. And the original uh, spinning wheel, by the way, which is something you definitely want to make sure you have if you if you have that has all the the inserts and stuff in there and it has the pouch with the discs and so here you go right here they are all here these are the discs to set up and play the game the comps on this well currently there is not one available so that's going to really let me just really put the price up there especially now during uh, you know, when we're getting close to the holidays, but the highest that this has sold for is $325 plus $9.60 shipping. And there were many other examples of this selling. If you look up the comps on it, I'll show some examples on my screen of it selling for um, $200 and, you know, right around that price, even a little higher than that. So, this was the secret technique that I just described to you that I used on how to find a valuable item that everybody else just missed because they're focused on, you know, looking at items that are, you know, just overpriced and they're not going to be able to flip it anyway. And what wound up happening is that one of the persons that, that went down the stairs grabbed the Nintendo, wait till you see the price on it later, grabbed the Super Nintendo and a bunch of other things, took the tags off because they had tags on them that you're supposed to bring with you, took the tags off, went upstairs, tried to check out. And they told him what the real prices were of it. You know, maybe he thought, oh, I'm not going to have to pay that. Maybe they'll forget the prices. And, um, the estate sale dealer had to bring them back down the stairs. That person wound up getting kicked out of the estate sale for trying to pull a stunt like that. So don't try to do something like that. And, um, you know, so it just caused a whole bunch of commotion and it caused a bunch of delay, which was, again, to my advantage, because they're all arguing who should get what, who should get this. And while they're doing that, again, I've got this whole open space ahead of me. And, um, you know, just grabbing other stuff and uh, you know, it was just, it was just a lot of fun. So that's a technique to use uh, if it applies in your situation. You've got to use experience, know your dealers and that type of stuff. But uh, I'm going to get this listed uh, Sunday night for sure and uh, get this posted. So that's the story. All right. So these are the screenshots I was referring to earlier for this game. They're completed sold prices on eBay. And as you can see, this game reliably sells for between 200 and 300 plus dollars. I will start the price at $349.99 because I have no competition. And then we'll just see what happens from there. Again, I just find it ironic that I found what is likely the most valuable single video game related item there in a non-video game section while everyone else ahead of me was specifically looking in the video game section for an item like this, but not realizing that they were all going to be uh, overpriced. Now, I did find two video game related books in that section as well. I normally avoid video game guidebooks because they're usually overproduced, but this is Conquest of the New World. There's two of them. And it's a more obscure title. I couldn't find any comps, so that's why I picked those two up. Now, uh, this is just a warning. When you find uh, books with famous titles, make sure you open them up and look at what the latest date is. Don't get thrown off by the earliest date and the latest printing because the later they are, the less valuable they're going to be uh, in general. So I left that behind. Now, this is one of those crazy prices I was telling you about. $800? No way. I'd be deep in the hole if I uh, got that. So not going to do that. Look behind signs. Sometimes things get uh, totally obscured or partly obscured like this. It's a Splatoon uh, screen protector. Uh, and that one goes reliably for 40 bucks. Now, they then told me they wanted $50 for this X-Wing fighter. No way. Uh, in that condition, not going to happen. That is maybe what I could get out of it retail. 
Uh, this is another example of famous books like The Catcher in the Rye. Look at all those printings there. You have to check that out. Don't just grab it and run. Make sure you do a, an investigation. I couldn't believe all of this blank media is there and it's sealed. This is reselling 101, folks. If you see this stuff, you need to pick it up. It sells really well in bulk and fast. So VHS tapes, uh, for one, definitely pick those up. And then cassette tapes. You could see I wiped that section out. I left the CDRWs there and the zip disk because they're, they're not worth anything, but those items are. Now, also, you know, this is another example in this video of sometimes things are in sections that um, get misinterpreted. Those are not VHS tapes. They look like it, right? But they're books. That book by, uh, set by Robert Jordan sells reliably for $40. Uh, so I picked that one up. That's the Wheel and Time uh, series. Now, this is another example of how pricing was off. You could see the boxed albums are priced higher than uh, the other albums. And the boxed albums uh, in general, they usually, you know, you barely find ones that sell, uh, uh, you know, especially for what you typically find that estate sells, which are all these titles here of this, you know, classical music and stuff. And they were in bad shape. So I avoided it. Uh, if you remember from last week's video, I was talking about looking for common themes when you're looking, uh, you know, for books. And you could see there, uh, the the logo is similar, and also you'll see some similar names there, and that's the the Moomin Troll series. Some of you might uh, know of it. Uh, they actually had a um, a TV show a few years ago called The Moomins, and it's about this uh, family of trolls. They look like hippos, uh, but if you could find these books uh, in lots. Uh, they are valuable, so uh, pick them up. And so I just grabbed that stack right there. Also, just a little trick, make sure you're looking at those thin ones in which you can't really tell uh, very easily uh, what it is. And that's a clue. You know, you need to investigate it. It's Obadiah. Uh, one of those books is very common uh, and the other isn't, but um, that that should go for like, you know, those two for like $20 or so together. Now, this is one of the most overlooked things at estate sales and one of the most valuable things, which are vintage oversized dictionaries. And finding this one with the um, slip cover on it or the uh, dust jacket on it is very, very difficult. This is the second international edition from 1961. I already have this one listed for $150. And as you saw earlier, one of the things that I do is a little test with the sticker. Uh, just make sure that when you go to peel off the sticker, that it's not going to rip off part of the book. Because sometimes uh, that's what they do at some of these sales is they put these you know ridiculous stickers on them that don't peel off easily. And then you damage your item. That was worthy of a big double tap, by the way. Uh, anyway, so um, this is just me uh, taking it uh, home later and just showing you to make sure you look through the books because sometimes you could find some valuable things like that Canadian deerskin Vancouver Canada bookmark. I already have that listed for 15 bucks right there. And that's just a nice little surprise in there. And then there was a nice uh, vintage brochure I came across from Sir Walter Scott's uh, Abbotsford uh, house. And it's a, a 1982 uh, brochure, which is really cool because that's the 150th anniversary of his death. So I listed that one for 15 bucks as well. A good example of a nice piece of ephemera you might find uh, inside of books. I found all sorts of cool things in books before. Uh, these are just some tips on pictures uh, that you should take when you're displaying uh, books like this. Make sure you take a picture of some of the nice colorful plates inside, diagrams. Go take a look at my listing for it while it's still up. Um, this is another uh, example of something you would take anything with lots of pictures on it. So these two pages would be a perfect example of something you'd want to take uh, a picture of rather than this one here in which these two pages don't have a lot of pictures there. So, you know, make sure you're choosing your pictures uh, carefully. And this one you could see here has some black and white photos. So I took pictures of that too. So you could see more in my listing. Now look at this. What was the last video I did? I did a video on identifying saints and who do we see here? But St. Francis once again. He pops up uh, here, uh, this time in ceramic tile form. So I picked him up for three bucks. This person was an animal lover and all those animals, that's the giveaway uh, as I talked about in the prior video on saints identification. So make sure you check it, that one out. Anything alligator plush, I tend to pick up. And so that one is just a dollar. It's a pet toy and it does uh, squeak. 
So I just made sure I tested that out. John Deere stuff. You don't even really have to look it up if it's priced this low. $2 for the cup, definitely. This is awesome. This is about a $90 to $100 piece. It's the uh, Oster uh, horse hair clipper. So that's amazing. Just had to test it out to make sure it worked. So let's test it out and see what happens. All right, so I did find some clasp envelopes here. I love finding shipping supplies at estate sales. Just get it for so cheap. I just take them out of the uh, big box that they come in and put it in my own box. Just makes it easier uh, to carry around. This is just a broader view of what it looked like down the basement area. As you can see, most people already left. And that's what typically happens. After about mm, 45 minutes, an hour, you know, most people are out of there. And this is why... You know, you can see me grabbing another sealed cassette tape in there. Uh, this is why patience really pays off because, you know, if you take your time to go through things, that's where you'll find a lot of things people missed. Now, no one missed anything there. There's just a bunch of, you know, old cassettes with topic areas people aren't interested in. Uh, but this was something I picked up, and I'm going to give credit to Kat, the nurse flipper, who I interviewed recently. Uh, Dave, the Midwest picker, shouted her out recently when he went to a thrift store. So go check out Dave uh, when he came across some scarves. And uh, this one here, I actually checked comps on it by Echo. Uh, this mushroom scarf uh, sells for about 20 bucks. So I just got to clean some stains off of it, uh, picked it up. They didn't even charge me for it when I left. So uh, thanks, Kat. I walked into this big uh, closet in the basement and, you know, there's just stuff in there that wasn't good. There were some canes uh, down at the end. They were just modern canes that weren't worth anything. You know, like faded Eddie Bauer stuff, you know, $10 flannels by, you know, companies that weren't worth anything. So I just left it there. I uh, went upstairs. Uh, most of the rooms were pretty bare. I did find this colorful hat. Remember, always look for nice, bright colors. That reminds me of Jessie Shops right there. I could see her wearing that, <laughs> but I passed on the uh, quilt just because I just the colors aren't bright enough for me, so I didn't really like it. But uh, And uh, as a reminder, go check out uh, Jessie Shops on Instagram, and I'm out of here. All right, so we're out of there. We've got an entire box of amazing treasures. I am really happy. The total cost was just $49. I mean, I'm going to make that back and then some with just the horse clippers or the uh, dictionary. So yeah, just amazing. And then forget it with all these cassettes. I mean, it's just crazy how many I wound up getting. So awesome day hunting. All right, so as you can see here, I'm back at Primetime Treasure Headquarters. I wanna give two shout outs. The first one goes to Jenneth Pedraza. Uh, sometimes she uses the account Teresa Pedraza, but she sent me a really nice card in the mail. Uh, as you can see there, it says, give me a C. That kind of reminds me of the CEO uh, chant that Carol Cedrone gives me. So there, I guess I gave a third shout out uh, to Carol. But um, uh, this one, if you open it up, it says congrats. And she's congratulating me for remodeling uh, the room down here after the flood. And she said it looked amazing and she thanked me for helping out people in the reselling community. So thank you as well. I really appreciate this. And I uh, also want to give a shout out to Pat Norman. Uh, Pat is a member of my Facebook group, the Facebook Reselling Resource Center. You could join that down below. We've got over 21,000 members there. Uh, just check the description section to see how to get in there. It's free. Uh, and Pat also uh, sub is subscribed here to the channel and he comments every once in a while. And when I was at the estate sale, I heard someone say, hey, prime time. And I turned around, I looked and it was Pat and we got to talking and it was it was great to great to talk to him. Uh, so now, it was funny because when I got back from the estate sale, I saw that Pat had posted in the Facebook group that he met me and he said, it's true. He really does take his time, go through everything, and he does carry around a box. So yes, it absolutely is true. Those are other uh, secrets uh, to my success as well. So um, anyway, uh, I'm going to settle down now. I'm going to go uh, hang out with Daisy and just unwind for a bit. But it was a lot of fun, and thanks for coming along for the ride. Let me know what your favorite item uh, was down below, and if there's anything that you're interested in, 
uh, let me know that as well. I'll be happy to make it a priority for you and post it. And don't forget to check out the Primetime Treasure Hunter merchandise store down below as well. Take care, everyone. All right, Daisy. Well, we're going to rest today and uh, watch a movie. So uh, hope you're comfortable. And uh, say goodbye to all your fans. I know it's been a long day guarding all the treasures. And uh, we'll see everyone at the next one. Take care.